Good morning, students. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Okay, uh, this is a class of railway engineering, professional elective one. So we are in second module of railway engineering. I guess the, it will be a fifth, fifth class of railway engineering. So in this class, uh, we are going to uh, discuss about some defect of rails. Due to many reasons, uh, a rail component may, uh, may fail or may out of working condition. Okay, may out of working condition. So we're going to discuss about that particular effect of different means on rail lines. Okay. Okay, fine. So we'll share my screen. My screen is visible to you. Yes or no? Sir. Okay. Okay, so the topic name is your wearing of rails or rail wear, you can say. Okay, or you can say the defects of rail different type of uh, rail wear we're going to discuss in this class okay you know what is wear wear means uh, defect basically it may be a different region fine so if i tell you about the basic idea about rail wear so due to process of moving loads and friction between rail and wheels the rail heads get warm out in the course of service. Of course, you know, uh, a train moves along a rail only and basically the wheel tread or, or the wheel rim part is continuously in contact with the rail head. Okay. That means if I give you one direct uh, definition uh, just a second let me show you a drawing so I'll sh show you one close picture I think yeah here i think you will see so for just for your imagination so that you can understand these things so con there is a continuous contact between the wheel thread part okay or you can say the wheel rim part with the top part of the rail that means the rail head you can see the top part is called rail head right so and there is a continuous friction between wheel and the head of the rail and this is a continuous process fine so you can say that due to the process of moving load and friction between rails and the wheel the rail head okay this rail head get warm out in the course of service a lot of metal of rail heads get warm out causing the weight of the rail to decrease okay so due to wearing material of uh, material of the rail uh, break down from its original part and ultimately the the standard weight of the rail 
is going decreasing okay the weight of the rail is decreased due to the rail wear this loss of weight of the rail section should not be such that the stresses exceed their permissible value that means you we have already discussed about the rail component okay different type of rail oh sorry yeah different type of rail and different weight of the rail okay so there are some standard rail weight also be available this standardized okay and rail whether it is uh, depending on a different gauge whether it is broad gauge meter gauge or narrow gauge different rail have a standard weight and that particular standard weight is so designed so that uh, it can hold the load coming on it you already know that um, the vertical downward load of the moving train along with the life load inside the train all coming as a point load in the wheel sorry in the rail from the wheel okay so rail is to withstand the vertical downward downward load and if it lose a standard weight that means there is a chance of failure of the rail component okay so uh, overall this is you can say this is a summary of rail wire why it is done and what is the consequences of rail wire that means we need to um, reduce the rail wire or you can say we can there should be a um, time to time maintenance of the railway track so that we can minimize the rail wire part okay so let's discuss about different types of uh, wear in rails a rail may face a, a rail may face wear and tear in the following position a rail may face wear and tear wear and tear in the following position like at top of the rail okay side of the rail and end of the rail like that okay that means if the rail get failure part or failure uh, portion or you can say the wear and tear occur in the rail head top part it's called a vertical wire you can say that means a rail may go through a vertical wire it also go go through the lateral wear or battering of the rail end all these things okay so i'll show you one diagram okay let me check whether it is here or not here you can see uh different based on the location of the particular rail section we have different kind of name you can see so this is a flat footed rail you can see okay i think you can identify now this is a flat footed uh a cross section of a flat footed uh, rail okay this is a head part this is a wave part and this is a foot part okay fine and here you can see the trend the failure i'm going to show you here here you can see top surface you can see this the spot if failure or wear and tear occurs in the top part is so you can see the head surface defects okay and the head okay and here you can see in the lateral direction or in vertical direction so the vertical longitudinal split defect okay along this web part okay and uh, along the side along the side of the rail you can see the transverse defect okay and there are some different the defects also there like star crack at bold hole okay and diamond crack in the web part this is a web part okay so depending on the shape of the uh, wear and tear we have different name got it so generally a rail may face wear and tear in the uh, based on the position they are like vertical wear lateral wear and battering of the rail end okay well we are going to discuss about what is battering of the rail end in coming lecture okay where is more prominent in some special location of the track and this location are normally of the following on sharp curve due to centrifugal force on steep gradient due to the 
extra force applied by the engine on approaches to railway station possibly due to the acceleration and declaration in tunnel and coastal areas due to human humidity and weather effect that means based on the geographical location or based on the alignment of the railway track we can uh, estimate in which area there is a possibility of wear and tear and that particular area is like uh, in sharp curve so in sharp curve means when we are uh, in sharp curve you know we provide what super elevation okay in coming module we are going to discuss in detail about super elevation but till now you know little bit about super elevation from your highway engineering class right in fifth semester so i believe you know this thing about super elevation so suppose this is your curve okay i'm we are discussing a sharp curve okay and this is your outer rail this is your inner rail okay and this outer rail is raised little higher comparatively to the inner rail this is called this is your call super elevation right you know this thing right so in this uh, area in this part in this section that means in the sharp curve due to the centrifugal force it always try to uh, force centrifugal force try to take the train in outer direction okay so there is a more friction between the rail and the wheel base or you can the wheel train okay so in the particular sharp curve there is a possibility of wear and tear okay that means the rail section may get fail or rail a component of rail may get fail in sharp curve there is a possibility okay next in case of steep gradient due to extra force applied by the engine that means steep gradient means suppose i'm giving you one uh, hill area suppose this is your hill okay which is a wrong direction I'm just simply showing over just a hill okay it is not a exactly anyway just a, suppose this is a hill part okay it is more steep okay i'll show you a little bit suppose like this this is your hill part this is your hill so your rail is moving in this direction so that means uh where am i yeah on steep gradient due to the extra force applied by the engine that means we already told now uh, uh in previous class that means in a steeper or in a rising gradient where your dead load is usually the dead load is directly your weight of the train is directly vertical but in rising gradient there is an additional component will come of the weight that is your w i think w sine theta okay this theta is your angle here okay this is thing already discussed so because of this uh, W sine theta additional weight which is a uh, resisting force in uh, rising gradient that means in steep gradient you can say in steep gradient the engine or lo uh, the locomotive have to give extra force and because of that a more uh, there is a additional friction you can say between the wheel tread and the rail so there even in the steep gradient also there is a possibility of wear and tear or failure of the rail part okay next uh, on the approaches on approaches to railway station possibly due to acceleration and declaration that means you if you move uh, via train I think you have also experienced so near near the station whether a train is approaching the station or moving from the station it gives a sudden shock you will feel a sudden shock because of the uh, sudden acceleration or sudden declaration and that particular uh, braking uh, mechanism in case of declaration and the additional acceleration also cause some extra friction or extra stresses in the railway faces or railway head that means we can say on approaches to the railway station even coming out from the railway station there is a possibility of wear and tear of the rail okay 
in tunnel or coastal area due to humidity and weather condition that means even the rail component also fail due to the atmospheric effect okay like the humidity or temperature all these things also affect the rail part rather than the friction okay so this is somehow a, a situation or you can say some area or you can say the the portion of the railway track where there is a more possibility of wear and tear okay so this is all about different types of wear and tear means you can say and here you can see some methods of reduce methods to reduce wear okay now we have already discussed about uh, different types of wear again we are going to discuss about wear, uh, different types of wear uh, in detail but till now it is a overall overall summary of wear and tear of rail okay so anyway there is some uh, approach that we can adopt to reduce wear of rail so based on field experience some of the methods adopt to reduce vertical wear and lateral wear on straight path and curves are as follows like better maintenance of the track to ensure proper alignment and use of the correct gauge. Next, reduction in the number of joint by welding. Use heavier wear resistant rails. Use of bearing plates in case of wooden slipper. Lubricating the gauge face of the outer rail in case of curves. Providing check rails in case of sharp curves interchanging inner rails and outer rails and changing the rail by carrying out track renewal okay we are going to discuss about this all this this factor in okay after we discuss totally about different types of railway okay for now we just understand these things anyway uh, we are going to discuss about some uh, different images we are going to discuss some images of different uh, where wearing or drawback of the rail okay so like that one is your rail and better we already discussed right rail and better so why or when the rail and better occur rail and better means the end part of the rail get failed due to some reason so we're going to discuss about that the hammering action of moving load on rail joints okay the hammering action of the moving loads on rail joints better the rail ends in the course of, in due course of time that means you know these things right that two rail can be joined together by fishing plate this is your fishing plate we already discussed right this is the fishing plate joined by by bolting with each other okay fine and this uh, rail is connected by bearing plate with the sleeper this is a wooden sleeper you can see this is a wooden sleeper fine this is your fishing plate is used to join the uh, joint to rail okay if you look closely here you can see some wear at the end part of the rail is it visible is it visible right this is your end part of the rail one part and this part i'm talking about this part okay can you see so this is your battering action of end rail okay the hammering action of moving load on rail joints better the rail end due to due course of time due to the impact of the blows the contact surface between the rails and slippers also get worn out the ballast at place where the slippers are joined gets shaken up and the fish plates a fish bowl become loose and all these factors further worsen the situation that means overall we already know now this section this part this part is a weaker part of a railway track where a two rail join to each other okay and that's why a fishing plate is required here but if it is not proper fastening is not proper and because of the heavy load 
in due course of time it may get fail okay and the shape of this end part of rail is called battering action of rail okay and thereby increasing the rail and better this is the rail and better okay okay here you can see there's another image of here this is a cross section of a, a flat footed rail you can see this is the head part this is the wave part and at the bottom this is your bottom uh, base okay or foot you can say here you can see the rail end better okay now it is not uniform it is it become a uh, very irregular shape okay and this part is called your transverse defect in this part okay in addition to that some other defect are also may we can see in case of rail like hogging of rail okay or burning of wheel we're going to show i'm going to show you now okay the rail wear and battering of rail ends are the two major defects in rail rail wear and battering of rail ends are the two major two major defect in rail however some other types of defect may also develop in a rail and assist its removal in extreme cases and they are like hogging of rail hogging of rail what is hogging rail? I'm going to show now. Here you can see I'm drawing. Here you can see the hogging. This part, the end part, uh, bent down. This part bent down. Okay, this is called hogging. Okay. The rail end gets hogged due to poor maintenance of rail joint. If the rail joint is not proper, even in the joint section, the rail get hogged down. Okay. Uh, yielding format if poor maintenance of rail joint in the format and loose and faulty fastening and other such reasons okay that means overall you can say if the joint uh, the end the rail in are not joined properly the rail may get failed due to hogging there is a possibility the hog rail is a surface defect of the rail in which the rail ends are bent downward at the joint okay you can see the hogged rail is a surface defect of the rail in which the rail end are bent down at the joint. Hogging rail cause the quality of the track to deteriorate. Okay, of course, uh, a train when is, the train is, is moving along the hogged rail, there is a possibility of derailment also. Okay, so it's very serious. Uh, you can say a drawback of the rail, or you can say wear of rail. Okay. And this can be minimized by different matter, uh, different mat approach. Here you can see a drawing of a hog drill. Okay, how can you identify a hog drill? So, suppose by witnessing in the going in the field, you can see the hog drill. And from the center of the hog, you have uh, overall one meter length of the uh, the rail you can remove. Okay, that means. 50 millimeter from each side you can go okay so overall one meter of the rail from uh, from the center overall you can uh, remove it or you can replace it in case of hog drive okay that means you can say metro measurement you can say so next you can say the scrubbing of rail scrubbing or rail you can see this scrubbed kind of shape or uh, elliptical shape of okay this is your scrubbing of rail the scrubbing of rails occurs due to the falling of patches and skunked chunks of metal from the rail that means the metal metal part are washed out from the top surface okay this part of the metal washed out okay or fall out it is called scrubbing of action scrubbing action okay so scrubbing, scrubbing of rails occurs due to the falling of patches and skunks of metal from the rail. And it is generally seen in the shape of elliptical depression. Where you consider elliptical depression, whose surface reveals a progressive fracture with numerous cracks around it. 
okay if you look closely there are some crack surface also be can visible okay then wheel burn here you can see the wheel burn you can also see wheel burn here okay the wheel burn are caused by the slipping of the driving wheel of the locomotives on the rail surface as a consequence extra heat is generated and the surface of the rail gets affected resulting in a depression of the rail table wheel burns are generally noticed on steep gradient and where there are heavy incidence of breaking and near water column that means we are you can say at the station if you sudden uh, locomotives get suddenly uh, stop the brake or apply the brake because of the friction may get wheel burn okay that means wheel burn footprint may you can see the visible here okay it's, i think this is your wheel burn you can see and closely you can see the wheel burn now shelling and black spot you can see some shelling this part you can say shelling okay and black spot nearby the end or side of the uh, the rail part inside part of the rail the black spot here you can see the shelling in the is the progressive horizontal separation of metal that occur on the gauge or inner side of the rail that means the inner side of the rail get filled okay some black spot may visible nearby the uh, side okay it's called your shelling of or black spot uh, it is primarily caused by heavy bearing pressure on a small area of contact which produce heavy internal shear stress that means if maximum loads are taken by the inner uh, face of a rail okay so due to the excessive load or non uniform load taken by the inner face of the rail the wear may appear in the face of shelling and black spot okay and it is visible uh, it is occur in inner face of the rail okay inner face of the rail not the outer one in the inner face okay and finally you can say corrosion or corrugation of rail okay so corrugation consist of multiple oh, sorry uh, corrugation consist of minute depression of the surface of rail varying in shape and size and occurring in irregular intervals the exact cause of corrosion or corrugation is not yet known although many uh, theories have been put forward the factors which help in the in formation of rail corrosion however are briefly uh, given here like metrically and edge of rail that means due course of time a corrosion of rail may occur like high nitrogen content of the rail and physical and environmental condition of the track even effect of oxidation like in the time of rolling and stretching the rail also a cause of that means a uh, corrosion of rail may occur okay so i'm going to show you some picture of that so that you can understand clearly okay about different defects of rail so we have discussed that uh, to minimize um, wear of wear and tear in case of uh, some areas we can use check rail i think it is given here somewhere with it yeah the method of reduce wear okay so here you can see the providing check rail in case of sharp curves so what is check rail mainly first i'll show you some picture here wait here you can see check rail the additional rail is placed inside the railway line okay here you can see check rail the v-shape inside 
rail is provided yeah, inside the rail the, the rail move the train move along the outer rail okay the inner one you can see this inner one this is your uh, guard rail or you can say check rail okay this is basically uh, used here to uh, maintain the construction nearby the area okay this area to give more strength to the railway track okay and especially in case of the inner rail in, uh, in the turning point okay the steep gradient or in the steep curve a additional check rail or guard rail is provided nearby the inner face so so that uh, to give a more strength to the railway track or sometimes it's also provided in the kind case of bridges okay that means in rail transport a guard rail or check rails are used in the construction of the track and it is placed parallel to the regular running rail to keep the wheels of the rolling stock in alignment to prevent the derailment okay they are generally used along areas of restricted clearance such as as a bridge okay or tunnel or level crossing that means there is some area or a very um, you can sensitive area like bridges okay tunnel trestle level crossing that means we are there we should minimize or there should not be any chance of derailment of the rail that means we need to provide a more strength in that area and to provide more strength to the sleeper part okay we have provide an additional inner rail okay and they are called guard rail or check rail so even by providing this also we can minimize the effect or the stresses generated on the rail part and by doing this we can also minimize the rail wear or you can say that we can minimize the rail wear and tear okay yeah so here you can say some uh, scrubbing of rail this picture is already seen to you okay there's some scrubbing of rail you can see the rail scrubbing see even black spot also is visible here I think here something is there. Let me check. Sorry. <clears throat> here you can see in this picture, black spot, V-shaped crack. So you can identify identify different cracks uh, by witnessing in the field. Going in the field, you can see different different crack in the rail. Okay, fine. Let me show you a different one. Let me check. Here you can see. Wear of rail, okay. So this is all about different, different, a uh, different failure or different wear and tear of railway line, okay. And this can be minimized by this method, okay. That means uh, better maintenance of the track. That means we need to go for frequent maintenance of the track so that we can minimize the wear and tear of or to reduce the wear okay and by reducing number of joint by welding that means if you go for welding the joint that means there is no uh, case of adding fishing plate or something like that or it will remove the uh, bolting and joint it <clears throat> it it behaves like a one uh, single uh, rail so that by reducing the joint we can minimize the rail wear also which is done by welding okay or you can also you go for using a heavy uh, rail which can resist 
where okay we can also use a different uh, heavier rail section so that uh, the impact of wear is reduced okay and if you are using a wooden slipper to give more strength we can also use bearing plates okay and lubricating the gauge face you know uh, that means the gauge face the inner face of the rail uh, get more uh, signs of failure there okay i will show you here Let pins, uh, I'll show you which one. Okay, here also you can see. So this is your rail, okay. So the inner face of the, that means what is the uh, gauge from inner face to inner face, right? And you can see the more chances of the failure of the, uh, there's a chance of a possibility of the failure or visible of black spot nearby the inner face of the rail this is the inner face inner face okay and if you get if you go for lubricating the inner face it will reduce the friction okay and this this uh in this way we can reduce uh the possible generation the wear or you can reduce the wear by lubricating the inner face of the rail okay providing check rail we already discussed about that by providing check rail in sharp curve that means where we provide super elevation nearby the inner face we can provide check rail which give more strength to the slipper or the overall track interchanging the inner and outer rails we can also go for interchange the inner part and outer part also so that they can last for more time okay or also we can go for changing the rail part this is the ultimate solution you can replace the rail section so this is all about today class we have discussed different where wear and tear of rail section causes of rail section different pattern of rail wear and how to reduce the rail wear okay this is all about today class is there any doubt till now if you don't have any doubt then i'll just close this uh, sharing sir yeah so the changes of failure is more in this uh, inner side of the rail now so like why not the outer rail like see it? see the rail is tilted right the rail part is tilted and uh since the maximum uh your especially in case of turn or you know sub turn the maximum load is coming on the this part if you consider this rail i will show you uh, here this kind of rail okay so mainly the load is coming like this okay not like this vertically it's not coming it is always little bit inclined and most of the if you see the uh, center line like this mostly mostly the maximum load is taken by this face only although in some places the tilting is provided okay tilting is provided provided till now should be some more chances of failure is occur in the inner face of the rail okay there is a chance there is i'm not talking that it always in the inner face there is a possibility of failure in the inner face if the tilting is not provided properly okay if tilting is okay, not provided sir. properly then the load is coming on the inner face not exactly inner face uh, if you consider the this is your uh, your rail head if you see that this center of gravity line mostly the uh, the your wheel base is moving along this line okay so that it is prevent the derailment okay since center of gravity is moving in this direction if your this is your train suppose train is train is moving like that and center of gravity is always tends to take the train in this direction okay and to reduce that we can go for tilting the rail if this is your slipper part okay, let this go this 
this is your slipper okay and even the tilting is provided suppose this is your tilting part like that the rail are provided like that these things are already clear in i think this is in last class okay and the wheel base is moving like that this is a wheel okay so the train is moving like that this is your train this is a wheel of the train this is a rail part so basically to counteract the centripetal force is always tends to inside direction and the most of the load is coming in this part that's why there is a say theoretically you can say there is a more possibility of rail wear in this portion so because of that this part or inner face may get failed by black spot or thus transverse uh, failure okay but it is not exactly this tilting is provided okay it's just slight tilting not that to, uh, it's not a tilting data okay it's very very small amount of tilting is provided okay so i'm not saying that there is a all this the rail wear is only going to occur in the rail side or rail inner face but there is a possibility if the proper um you know proper placing of the railway track is not provided then there is a uh, possibility of rail wire in case of inner face is it clear yes sir okay any doubt any other so i'm stopping the uh, sharing okay if you don't have any doubt and i'll stop my recording now and i'll take your attendance now if you have any doubt again you can also ask me no problem